So here we are again on Gospel Topic Essays on LDS.org. As we recall from previous episodes, the introduction to the essays, the church assures us that the brethren decided that there wasn't any safe place necessarily to get good information on the internet about these particular subjects so that they in their wisdom decided to gather it and put it in a place more convenient for us to find dependable accurate information they assured us that the Lord doesn't want us looking at just one viewpoint <clears throat> that was their interpretation of section 88 telling us to seek wisdom by studying by faith and so they'd be giving us all the info we needed in straightforward heavily researched um, you know discussions here in these essays and that they were approved by the first presidency in council of the 12 so we saw that they hid the website so it wasn't easy for people to find only people found it were people that were googling controversial search uh, search uh, terms now this one I'm going to take a look at to see how the church handles it it's called the Book of Mormon and DNA Studies. Okay, so this became an issue since the uh, Lamanites were declared multiple times to be the primary source of uh, you know, the primary ancestors of the American Indians. It's in the Book of Mormon, and also Joseph Smith said he was told by the angel, who was the angel Nephi, which later got changed after being published th three different publications, including the Pearl of Great Price. After he was dead, that became the Angel Moroni story, but he said that, that the angel told him that he was one of these people, and he was one of their prophets, and that the book talked about how these people got here, and it talked about the American Indians and the source from which they sprang. So that's pretty clearly identifying the Lamanites or Nephites and Lamanites as being the source from whence the American Indians sprang. So in the Book of Mormon uh, introduction it always said that the Lamanites were the uh, <clears throat> primary ancestors of the American Indians. Now since this DNA stuff came out the church has backpedaled quite a bit and changed it in 2006 to say that they're among them so let's read what they have to say here and see how it matches up okay so it says the church of jesus christ of latter-day saints affirms that the book of mormon is a sacred volume of scripture comparable to the bible it contains the record of god's dealings with three groups of people migrated from the near east to the americas long before the europeans okay so although it says the primary purpose is spiritual rather than historical. Of course, it just mentioned that, that what they just mentioned was historical. Three groups of people migrating here from the Near East, from the Middle East. So now they're downgrading that. Some people have wondered whether the migration, the migration it describes are comparable with scientific studies of ancient America. The discussion is centered on the field of population genetics and develops developments in DNA science. It's not that some people just wondered, it's just that massive <coughs> evidence came out that that's not the case. Some have contended that the migrations mentioned in the Book of Mormon did not occur because the majority of DNA identified to date in modern native peoples mostly resembles that of Eastern Asian populations, like, you know, like Siberia, Northeast Asia. Well, the majority, from what I read, 99.6% of the people tested in these various tribes throughout the Americas and population samples had, they could trace their DNA to yeah, Northeast Asia. Zero from the Middle East, as in none. 
from what I read. So Simon Southerton, LDS bishop in Australia, who happened to be a microbiologist, I believe, and when he was looking at the genetic studies, they meant a lot to him since he's well informed on that. And he wrote a book called uh, Losing a Lost Tribe, something like that, having to do with all this. So continuing. Basic principles of population genetics suggest the need for a more careful approach. Conclusions of genetics, like those of any science, are tentative, so basically we can never figure anything out. Okay, so they go on to say that, oh, they just got lost in a population that was already here. The same reasons, arguments, defenders, blah, blah, the Book of Mormon makes. So what they say here at the end is DNA studies can never decisively affirm or, you know, disprove the historicity of the Book of Mormon. And they go on to say that same thing at the end, too, which is a common theme in these. When there is proof of things, then they just say, well, you know, it's too complicated, we can't figure it out. But here we go. This is interesting. Again, let's see what they state. The ancestors of the American, Aaron American Indians. The evidence assembled to date suggests that the majority of Native Americans carry largely Asian DNA. Scientists theorize that in an era that predated the Mormon, the Book of Mormon accounts, they're being kind of vague there, a small group of people migrated from Northeast Asia to the Americas on a land bridge that connected Siberia from Alaska. These people, scientists say, spread throughout North and South America and are likely the primary ancestors of the American Indians. Okay, they kind of avoid some certain details. When the land bridge was there, it was like after the last ice age recently, so it was like, you know, like at least 10,000 years ago. Um, <clears throat> so, if they did migrate over then, well, that's long before Adam, so then the whole Bible story is blown. So I guess you better, you know, start doing some kind of transcendental meditation because Christianity is just blown out of the water. It doesn't work. Okay, the Book of Mormon provides little direct information about cultural contact, blah, blah, blah. And they try to leave it open to say that most Latter-day Saints, early Latter-day Saints, assume that Near Easterners or Western Asians like Jared, Lehi, and Mulek and their compadres were the first or largest or even the only groups to settle the Americas. Building upon this assumption, critics insist that the Book of Mormon does not allow for the presence of other large populations in the Americas, and that therefore Near Eastern DNA should be easily identifiable among the native groups, instead of lost in a giant sea of people that already existed here. Well, see, yeah, the problem is the people that were here for the last 15,000 years apparently came across on a land bridge long before Adam, and apparently they didn't get washed off by Noah's flood, which seems to be a little problem with the Book of Mormon. So let's see what the scriptures say, since they're not going to use the scriptures here again. Going on first, it says, continues to say, the Book of Mormon itself, however, does not claim that the people it describes were either the predominant or the exclusive inhabitants of the lands they occupied. Okay, and it goes on to make it sound like the Book of Mormon suggests there were other people here. Well, let's take a look at the Book of Mormon instead of checking out their generalization since they're not going to quote scripture. Okay, so if we take the word of the essay writer approved by the brethren, then we'd be believing that the Book of Mormon doesn't indicate that the land was preserved for the chosen seed. <clears throat> Could have been filled up with uh, all these other folks. So many of them, their DNA would get lost. Mm. Even though it says that they spread from the, knee, from the sea east to the sea west, the sea north to the sea south, and covered the whole face of the land. But here we are. Second Nephi chapter 1. But said he, <clears throat> notwithstanding our afflictions, we have obtained a land of promise, 
a land which is choice above all other lands, a land which the Lord God hath covenanted with me should be a land for the inheritance of my seed. Yea, the Lord hath covenanted this land unto me and unto my children forever, and also th all those who he should all those who should be led out of other countries by the hand of the Lord. Wherefore I Lehi prophesy according to the workings of the Spirit which is in me, that there shall none come into this land, save they shall be brought by the hand of the Lord. Wherefore this land is consecrated unto him whom he shall bring. And if it so be that they shall serve him according to the commandments which he hath given, it shall be a land of liberty unto them. Wherefore, they shall never be brought down into captivity. If so, it should be because of iniquity. For if iniquity shall abound, cursed shall be the land for their sakes. But unto the righteous it shall be blessed forever. And behold, it is wisdom that this land should be kept as yet from the knowledge of other nations. For behold, many nations would overrun the land, that there would be no place for an inheritance. Wherefore I, Lehi, have obtained a promise, that inasmuch as those whom the Lord shall bring out of the land of Jerusalem shall keep his commandments, they shall prosper upon the face of this land, and they shall be kept from all other nations that they may possess this land unto themselves. Did we get that? And if it so be that they shall keep his commandments, they shall be blessed upon the face of the land, and there shall be none to molest them, nor to take away the land of their inheritance, and they shall dwell safely forever. Okay. on to verse 11 there uh, and verse 10 says basically however if you're bad then you don't have such good promises if you're bad then yea he will bring other nations unto them and he will give unto them power and he will take away from them the lands of their possessions and he will cause them to be scattered and smitten and that's exactly what First Nephi chapter 13, I believe it is, says happens. Yeah, when the Gentiles get here, like in, you know, the 16 or 1500s, and then they, the wrath of God is upon the seed of the brethren of Nephi. In other words, the wrath of God is upon the Lamanites, and the, and the love of God and blessing is with the Gentiles that come here. And so they just start smiting and wasting the Lamanites so if that's when that happens then they should have been all alone up until then and that kind of looks like that's the way uh, Jeffrey Holland saw it and let's take a look at his talk he quotes the Jaredites first some quick quotes, quote, quotes from uh, Jeffrey Holland's talk entitled A Land of Promise Says he, Holy Scripture records that after the waters had receded from the face of this land, it became a choice land above all other lands, a chosen land of the Lord. Wherefore, the Lord would have all men should serve him who dwell upon the face thereof. Ether chapter 13. Such a special place needed to be kept apart from other regions, free from the indiscriminate traveler as well as the soldier of fortune. To guarantee such sanctity, the very surface of the earth was rent. In response to God's decree, the great continent separated, and the ocean rushed in to surround them. The promised place was set apart. Without habitation, it waited for the fulfillment of God's special purposes. With care and selectivity, the Lord began almost at once to repeople the promised land. The Jaredites came first, the stories of the great flood fresh in their memories, and the Lord's solemn declaration ringing in their ears. Elder Holland, now one of the twelve, disaffirms his own talk 
and the truth of the scriptures that back it up saying the land went from empty to Jaredites to Nephites to the Gentiles apparently eternal truth changed after the DNA studies came out